everybody, it's Chris Seeds, Routini from over at GayGamer.net, here with another weekly video podcast. I want to start this week with this week's big movie. Um, May has been a very big week for summer blockbusters, even though this is only just now Memorial Day weekend. Um, I guess everybody just didn't want to wait for Memorial Day weekend to start the summer blockbuster season, because, you know, we already had Amazing Spider-Man 2, and Godzilla, and um, now we have X-Men Days of Future Past. And unfortunately, after those first two movies, um, I kept my expectations very low for uh, X-Men. Um, I knew Spider-Man was probably going to be kind of a hot mess because it was just overstuffed with too many ideas, and in fact it did fall apart under its own weight, ruining what was actually a pretty decent core story. Um, Godzilla, as I have said in that week's podcast, um, was disappointing because uh, it was just a giant cock tease and kept cutting away every time things got good up until the very end when the last 20 minutes was the Godzilla monster battles that we came to see. Um, so that was disappointing. So I went into X-Men Days of Future Past with uh, very low expectations. Um, I was not as big a fan of First Class as everyone else seemed to have been. So I went into this thinking, all right, let's, you know, see. Turns out it's actually one of the, it is the best X-Men movie in my opinion. And it now ranks right up there with uh, some of my favorite all-time comic book movies. Um, it was just terrific. Uh, it was a good adaptation of the storyline. Um, and before going into it, I had read a review, um, I always like, uh, The Onion's AV Club, um, I find their reviews to be pretty good. Also, they do a good job of never spoiling anything, they have separate spoiler reviews if necessary, so, um, they said that, uh, Days of Future Past's biggest strength is also possibly its biggest weakness, because what it does is it jumps right in and assumes that you know who everybody is, and you know what's happening, and that you can just follow this story. Um, so for comic book geeks, it's great. For casual fans, they might have a little trouble following it. I don't know, I'm not a casual fan, obviously. Um, but, uh, you know, with all the time travel and everything, I think that they did a good job of just presenting the story as it is, but it doesn't really hold your hand like a lot of comic book movies do, where it's like, here is the character, and here is their powers, and this is explained very carefully so that normal people can understand the whole comic book universe and what goes on in it. Um, and this one did not do that. Because that's one of the things about comic book movies, is the first one is always really bad because it takes at least an hour to an hour and a half before you even get them into a costume, you know? Um, the sequels are always better because you can just hit the ground running. Um, the problem with the sequels is that they tend to say, well, we need more than one villain this time, and then it just gets to be a bit much. Um, but Days of Future Past was great, and not just because Hugh Jackman has a really, really terrific and prolonged butt shot in the movie. Um, it was not a quick one. It was, it's there, it's on screen, you can, you have time to enjoy it and relish it and savor those buttocks. Um... I do have to say that this new Roidy Wolverine is not quite as appealing to me as the original Flavor Wolverine, because in the first X-Men movie, my favorite scene was the one where he's running around in the basement with his no shirt on, and um, I rather enjoyed that. Um, and so I kind of like that a little bit better, a little more natural muscle than the whole roided out thing. Also, I worry about Hugh Jackman doing that to his body on a regular basis every time he does one of these Wolverine movies, but whatever. Um, I was also concerned because Wolverine seems to be taking over, and while Wolverine is a main character in the movie, he doesn't take over the movie as much as I was afraid he would, because all the ad campaigns were basically like, Wolverine, and a bunch of other characters. Um, but everyone gets a lot of play. Well, not everybody. Um, Anna Paquin is in it for about three seconds, has no dialogue, as a cameo, but uh, is higher up in the credits than a lot of people who have major characters in the movie, so good on you, Anna Paquin's agent, for negotiating that. Actually, I hear that she got, she had a more major role, but then it got cut from the film. So I look forward to the Days of Future Past uh, Blu-ray extras with all the deleted scenes, because I think there's going to be quite a few of them. I hope there's not like a director's cut or something. Um, 
because uh, this movie was really good, and it only got a little draggy around the three-quarter mark, because it was, like, building up to the climax. Um, but, uh, I, so I, I don't know if I'd like a director's cut, because it might be too much. Um, but overall, Days of Future Past was just fun. There's a lot of characters, lots of different powers, and they're just using their powers, and there's no shame in being a superhero movie with lots of superhero action, and I just love that. Um, and there's always little things to quibble with. Um, you can always quibble, but, like, my problems with Spider-Man 2 or Godzilla were not quibbling. They were major structural issues that I had. Um, here, I was perfectly fine with it. Yes, you can quibble that, wait, uh, Kitty can send people back in time? Okay, they don't really explain it. It's fine. It's a nod to the original comic book, where Kitty was the one who was sent back in time. But, you know, it's fine. I didn't, I just sort of said, okay, she has that power now. Whatever. It's fine. I, I didn't care about it. You know, some people quibble about little things. Why didn't this person use their powers to do this? And why didn't this person do that? And I'm like, you know, you can always quibble about lots of little things. But for me, it's a successful movie. If I can sit there for the two to two and a half hours and be thoroughly entertained, and that is what Days of Future Past did for me that the others did not do. Um, Winter Soldier was good, but that I don't count as a summer movie because that came out like months and months and months ago, it seems. Um, but, uh, you know, I had a friend who argued that Winter Soldier was better, and I, I'm, you might be able to argue that empirically Winter Soldier is a better movie than Days of Future Past, but um, I found Days of Future Past to be more fun, which to me is what I want from a superhero movie. Um, Winter Soldier was a little too serious and a bit dark and a little grim in places, but um, it wasn't as, you know, fun, woohoo, as, as uh, Days of Future Past was. Um, so that's my movie review, and I don't know if there's any more summer movies. I feel like everybody just front-loaded the summer with the blockbusters, and... Oh, well, there's Guardians of the Galaxy, that's coming out, uh, also known as um, some other people starring Chris Pratt's abs, and guest-starring other folks. Um, that actually looks... From the trailers, they're piping up the comedy on that one, so I'm hoping it's like the Wolverine ads, where it's like, oh god, Wolverine's gonna be all over this movie. I'm hoping that... Guardians of the Galaxy isn't as stupid and f trying to be funny as the ads are making it out to be, because there is also some sci-fi action in the ads, and I'm hoping they're just kind kind of like playing up the comedy to try to differentiate it from the other superhero movies, um, and it's not really that, because some of the humor is kind of stupid, and I'm a little worried, but uh, as long as Chris Pratt has enough shirtless scenes, it should be worth the price of admission. Um, and now on to uh, what I thought was wonderful gaming news uh, this week, even though it doesn't really affect me. Um, SingStar. Sony has announced that SingStar is coming to the PS4, um, which is great. I don't have a PS4, but it's nice to know that when I do eventually buy my PS4, I will be able to download the SingStar app and continue singing my songs. The only trick is... They're currently working out the licensing so that you can play anything that you've bought from the Sing Store, and you can just re-download it onto your PS4. Hopefully that's going to be like 99% of the titles, um, and I don't lose a bunch of stuff. The problem is that while the PS3, even if it wasn't a backwards compatible PS3, could play PS2 Sing Star discs, which is great. Um, I did not know this until someone told me this, and I was like, oh my god, then I am going to go buy that SingStar 80s PS2 disc for $5, because, hell, I can play it on my PS3. Like, it won't play regularly, you can't boot from it, but once you have the SingStar app going, or the, a SingStar disc in, you can eject your SingStar disc, or just insert the PS2 disc, and it will, SingStar will read that PS2 disc, and it can read those songs, and it's great. Um, unfortunately, the PS4 is unable to do that, because, God forbid, we include backwards compatibility, Sony and Microsoft. Um, so, if you have any actual PS2 or PS3 SingStar discs, uh, those will not play on your PS4. You can only sing your downloadable songs. Um, which, at this point, I have enough that I don't care. Like, my SingStar library is ridiculous. I don't need the discs, really, anymore. I hardly ever use them, except for my ABBA one, when I want to sing some ABBA songs. Um, but, uh, 
I'm looking forward to it. They've added the ability to use your cell phone as a microphone, which is actually a very clever idea of theirs, because you can download the SingStar app for free, but then you still need to go and buy the microphones, which are like, you know, 20 to $30, depending on where you can find them new or used. Um, and, you know, you can't just use like a regular, you have to use the SingStar mics. So that's a little, you know, frustrating. But now that you can just download an app to your phone for free, you can download the SingStar game for free, try some of the demo songs, and then you can just start downloading songs if you like it. Um, but it's a good way to get into it, and now it's completely free to try, which is great. It's a good idea. Um, I don't personally know how well those things, the, the microphone on your phone is going to work. And I also prefer to hold an actual microphone and not, like, my phone. But I just feel like that would be awkward. But, um, you know, when it happens, I'll give it a shot, and I'll let you know how I think it works. They also said that they were going to adjust the game so that it might not be as picky, which I think is to go with the not as good microphones. Um, hopefully they will also fix the rap meter because that is irrevocably busted. Um, I like the new uh, visual graphic style that they have. It's very cute. Um, I don't know if that's, you know, going to apply to the PS3 version when they do this update for the PS4. I don't know if the PS3 version will also get this update or if it'll just get the ability to use the phone microphones. Um, either way, what I'm taking away from this, see, I don't care because I don't have a PS4 yet, so it doesn't really apply to me, but I think this is fantastic news because, you know, it means that SingStar is continuing. Um, I mean, Lips died off, Guitar Hero disappeared, Rock Band even died finally, and that was doing great, I thought, but then it finally just went away and it was sad for my side not to continue with the DLC. Um, and so SingStar kept going, and they kind of dropped from updates every two weeks, to updates every three weeks, then they, it was every month, um, and they seem to be on a monthly schedule now, but as long as they're still releasing updates, I was like, yay, some of them aren't that great, there might be one song, there might be no songs, but as long as they were giving updates, the series was continuing and I would still have my music video game to sing along to. Um, and the fact that they're moving it to PS4 means that they are still behind it, and they are still supporting it, and there will continue to be more DLC. There's actually a new disc coming, but only in the UK. Um, I don't know if it's going to make it to the US. Um, but, uh, yay, SingStar lives. Um, and, and it also, hopefully, the next SingStar update uh, will be full of Eurovision songs, because I desperately need to belt out Rise Like a Phoenix. Um, you have no idea how badly I want that for SingStar, and, uh, I'm hoping that it's in the next update. Um, and now I have blathered on long enough, so I will let you go, and I will see you back here on my couch next time. Bye.